Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock. Thomas Miller here, and we had a listener question that we can't use the audio, unfortunately, but it's a great question that we want to pitch out to Robert. You know, one of the reasons that people seek out astrology, obviously, relationships is a big one, money's a big one, but probably one of the biggest up there is why the heck am I here? What's my purpose? What is my life mission? How could I live my highest timeline? So, Robert, where would you look in the chart to find that answer? I know most people are probably jumping up and down saying, it's the nodes of the moon. It's the nodes of the moon. Would you say so? Well, that's what she was asking. And a lot of people, everybody, I guess every astrologer will have a maybe slightly different answer here. But it's... It's the question, really, for astrology or for metaphysics. Why am I born? What is the purpose of this life, the present life? I don't look at the sun. I don't look at the nodes. I don't look at the moon. I don't look at anything except the ascendant to start. Because the ascendant changes one degree every four minutes of birth time. And the ascendant sign gives you the archetype of this life. This is why you were born. So in my case, for example, I have Capricorn rising, and it will be true for anybody with Capricorn rising. They are meant to find their spiritual and metaphysical career. That can be in anything. It can be as an actor, it can be as a banker, it can be as a... But with Capricorn rising, a person has chosen... To live a life that is not necessarily easy, in fact, it won't be. It'll be full of challenges, the first of which is to learn that you are, <clears throat> excuse me, that you are not your parents, you're not your family, you are you, so that you will probably have conflicts in your life if you have Capricorn rising that involve distinguishing yourself from your present. You may learn as much what not what you don't want to be from your parents. But the point is that you've chosen a life to test your ambitions, your ability to accomplish and earn respect, which is Capricorn's big deal in life. Uh, If if you have Taurus rising, I'm looking at this this sample chart that we have, then you are incarnated to experience physical reality in all of its immersion so that you want to have a life where you are physically comfortable, where you are financially comfortable and secure. And comfort is the key word. Another key word with Taurus on the Ascendant is the idea not just of comfort and pleasure and security, but of beauty and harmony. So all of those archetypes are what you're meant to express, but you're absolutely meant to take care of money. That's the the physicalization of what Taurus means, because Taurus is the sign of self-worth in the natural wheel. So here you have it rising. So you know that this lifetime is going to be a lifetime where you either will succeed or fail, depending on your self-worth beliefs, which you then have to study in some detail in the horoscope. But the, the rising sign, and then you can go down to the decanate of that sign, because you'll get a sub-rulership. Let's say you have 10 degrees Taurus rising. Well, that's the second decanate of Taurus, which is the Virgonian decanate of Taurus. So now you're going to look to the house where Virgo falls to get some more ideas of how this person is going to achieve this Taurus ascendant archetype, how they're going to, what their work is. With Virgo on the fifth house, they'd better find something they love to do if they follow their bliss. Fifth house, Virgo on that cusp of work. If they follow their bliss, they will make it. They may not be a millionaire, but they will make it. So each archetype rising also has a duad, a two and a half degree subdivision, which gives you another sub rulership to add to it. So by looking and studying at the ascendant degree, there's where you get your the reason that you're born. And then you can look to the ruler of that planet, of that sign, rather, on the ascendant, Capricorn rising, the ruler's going to be Saturn. Then you look to the condition of Saturn, and then you get to see all of the life's major challenges and developments. But you can do that with any ruling planet, whatever that sign is. But that's where I look to find out and explore the purpose 
of this life. So, <clears throat> for example, you have Taurus rising. All right, so you're in car, let's say Capricorn rising, doesn't matter, but Capricorn rising. So you, you are meant to live out all of the Capricornian archetypes in this life. What are your ambitions? And uh, you may have weak ambitions, in which case but that's absolutely going to affect your life. You may fail at the challenge of Capricorn rising. You chose it, your soul, but you're going to live out that ascendant sign as a Libra or an Aries or whatever your sun sign is. You still are here for the purpose that is symbolized by Capricorn rising, in this case, and by Saturn's aspects, but you're going to live those out according to your life force. You're going to do it as a an Aries or a Libra or a Scorpio or whatever, because the life force, the consciousness is your sun. Your life force is your sun. But the life purpose is really shown in thumbnail sketch at the ascendant. Of course, the life purpose is also shown by the house position of the sun and the moon. Because you can think of the sun as a target with a dot in the middle. It's like a target we're aiming to be. <clears throat> so whatever your sun sign is, you might think of it instead of I am a Libra or I am a Capricorn is I'm aiming to be a Libra. I'm aiming to be a Capricorn, that sun sign, that target with a dot in the middle. But but the real key, I think, to the why was I born is at the ascendant. And sometimes it's very interesting. If your ascendant ruler is how you say afflicted, then part of the reason you're born is to face some challenges about distinguishing your life from that of your parents or your family or your ancestry and so on. Actually, that is a challenge. let's take a look at this. Here's one of the perks of the job is sometimes I get to throw my chart up and ask you. <laughs> so let's take a look at this one with a 27 degree Gemini ascendant, but Mercury is in Sagittarius. Well, if you just start with the 27, 20, it's almost at 28 degrees, Gemini. So it's in the Taurus duad of Gemini. But Gemini is the sign of communications. So you're born to communicate. You're born to network. You're born to think. It's Gemini. You're born to communicate above all. So you're in broadcasting. Communicate what? Communicate ideas with people. And you look to see where's Mercury in this chart, in your birth chart. And so it's over here in Sagittarius. So what you're meant to communicate is higher thinking, higher wisdom. And this is your work. It's Mercury conjunct Jupiter in your sixth house already. So, and second of all, with Gemini rising, you are meant, you've chosen to live a fairly bifurcated life. You've been married twice, for example. And you you could have chosen another career, or sometimes with Gemini Rising, you can even have two parallel careers I did. as a broadcaster. Let's say, okay, you see what I mean. So, and this is natural for you. You're meant to do this, and you're meant to lead any anything to do with communications, especially of higher thought, wisdom, metaphysics, astrology, philosophy, all of these Mercury and Sag and Jupiter and Sag things. So you're meant to do that in a variety of ways, variety of Gemini. You need to travel. I hate to say, but being tied down to a marriage and family and children would not be easy for you. You could do it, but it wouldn't be easy because they uh, it's much better once they're grown <laughs> but uh because of your own need you've got such a rapid mind and you're interested in so many things the idea of having groups and retreats everything that you do thomas i think is very much in this gemini rising now you do it as a scorpio this is interesting and i'm also equally interested in how you just hopped over the no the nodes of the moon because a lot of people would talk about career and that you need to focus on family or that you had issues with your family and you're going to offset that as you said by focusing on the career i guess the two can tie together but very interesting that you just bypass that go straight well to, to me the, the you know the, the nodes are not your when you say what is your, the reason i'm born that is all synthesized at the ascendant so are the nodes everything in the chart 
is synthesized at the ascendant. But the nodes themselves, <clears throat> I really do think of it, they do indicate associations with groups or individuals in life, but they also indicate on a karmic level. The north node, to me, shows good karma that you've accrued in past lives, so you come into this life with a, an affinity for the things that are ruled by the sign the north node is in, even a talent for those things. In your case, it was in Libra. So you have been married in past lives and you've done a good job on it. You know how to be married. And so that was one of the, uh, I think, an inborn goal in your life was to be married and to have children, especially when you then look at your son, Neptune and Mars, all in your fifth house of children and in Scorpio, a water sign and so on. So uh, marriage and home and family were important to you because you've done them before and you did them again. The south node is karma that you have. It's either you neglected this or you abused it in a past life, whatever the archetype is. Here it's in Aries. And this is why this this conflict between this polarity, rather, between the, the nodes, good karma and ba not bad karma. It's just Aries is the side of you that you will have to develop in this life or go under. And this is to be true to yourself. You were raised in an atmosphere with the node square Saturn where you could have gone into the ministry, for example, which is a prefab existence that has been defined for you and laid out through maybe your father and your church and your community and so on. So here's what you do. Here's how you can succeed. And this is what you should do. You're a communicator. You should be talking about the word of God. And be a man as well. And you may have thought about that for a long time and, and decided, you know, I can see where that path goes. And then you would have taken a very traditional and very conservative sort of career path in life, but it would not have been true to you. You would have had to sacrifice you to do it. And I did, you've already done that. that. According to the South Node, you've had lifetimes where you've done this repeatedly, where you have caved into the peer pressures and demands of society around you rather than following your own true course. And so in this life, to do that has had some difficulties, obviously, but it also has led to the rewards of where you are now in your field. For those Does that you, make sense? Well, for those who have listened to the Subconscious Mind Mastery podcast and know my story and compare to what Robert just said, he hasn't. So there's the power of astrology and there's the power of this interpretation. <laughs> he just painted the picture beautifully. Wow, that's great. Hey, thank you for this. This is a very valuable lesson and I'm glad that we had the caller that uh, left us the message and got us at least to thinking about this and exploring it. So hopefully whoever you are out there that asked the question that that got you answered as well. All right, the charts that we mentioned, my chart and the previous chart that Robert referenced are both in the show notes as is the link to being able to book Robert for reading if you'd like to, our Discord channel and our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast with Robert Glasscock. <laughs>